One Child Nation is an absolutely magnificent and very sobering documentary by Nanfu Wang and Zhailing Zhang. What it does is it focuses on the one child policy of China and it's really told to the story primarily of one of the directors, Wang. Uh, Nanfu Wang and kind of her and her family's experience with the policy in China. The film opens with her talking about how she didn't really think much about the policy. It was just kind of ingrained into society when she was growing up in China. But once she moved to the United States and got pregnant with her first child, then she started to try to reevaluate that and then goes back to China, which is where the documentary takes most takes place mostly. And what she does is she goes there and she speaks with her remaining family members, I believe her grandfather's still alive, and she talks to him. And her grandfather's old enough to where the one-child policy wasn't in existence at the time, and he had multiple kids, five, six, maybe even seven kids, with most of them living on into adulthood. But his kids would be the ones that are hit by the one-child policy, specifically Wang's family, her mother and her father. Um, they were firmly within the one-child policy, and she was the firstborn child, so her being a female then allowed, by the government, allowed her parents to try again, and in the event if the second child was also a female, something could happen to it, possibly the government takes it, or, which is discussed later on in the documentary, a lot of times what would happen is these female children that are born later would just be abandoned, sent to orphanages, and in some case, I believe it was her cousin, um, one of her mom's cousins, that ended up having a child, and because it was a girl, they didn't want to register it, so they just took the child, left it out at the market to see if anybody would take it or anybody would you know, adopt it or care for it, and nobody did, and the child ended up dying. So the documentary, she talks to some of her town elders, various people in the area, to get kind of their opinions and what they believe or felt about the policy. And a lot of them, you could tell that it was hard for them to talk about, one, for it, just the possibility that you know their life had been altered by the policy, and also because you know the government of China is very corrosive in terms of how it surrounds everything and infects it or invades it and forces towards whatever propaganda they're promoting at the time it was the one-child policy. So the people are scared to really talk about it and how it inflicts them or how it harmed them or you know just the varying facets of it. Um, specifically, she talked to several what would be midwives at the time, and they tell a story. One of them is very kind of accepting of her role in a lot of these deaths of these children. Because a lot of times what they would do is if they find out that the child is a girl, they may would force an abortion on them, or the child is born, they kill the child, the government takes the child off, it's never seen again. And she felt that it was appropriate actions that the government took because more children would be a larger drain on the natural resources of the country and possibly cause a lot of people to live in poverty because they didn't have the ability to feed the children. And another person, and she was probably kind of a, the most emotional point in the film and what happened is she talks about how she had killed something like 10,000 maybe even up to 50,000 babies during this point in time either through forced abortions uh, you know killing the baby after it's born or taking it and making it disappear so to speak and she talks about how it hurt her after she started to realize that you know the government was forcing her to do this, it wasn't right, no matter what she thought at the time. But she eventually was able to you know see the error of her ways and realize that it was such a horrible practice. And now specifically, she devotes her time to trying to help infertility issues. Now that the one-child policy is lifted, and as part of um, the interview with her, they go into her room or her shop, and there's little banners everywhere around the shop, covering the entire wall, ceiling, hanging everywhere. And what the banners are, or they represent, is a child that was born through her help to an infertile couple. And it's really touching, and you can kind of see the horrors that they were experiencing over there, because, you know, being in America, it's not uncommon to see large families, for example, the Duggars, 30 kids and counting, whatever. But over there, it was 
a cultural thing to have a male child and if you had a female child that child in essence didn't have as much value or even any value especially if you were in a position like Wang was in this one where she was the firstborn child she's a female her parents loved her but in terms of Chinese culture you want your name to live on so you look for that male heir who will live on and help take care of you because once the female is married off or the girl is married off then she becomes part of the other family so the parents or elders don't really have anyone that's left to take care or aid them as they get older and I can't recommend this film highly enough it is it is absolutely beautiful um, it's very heartfelt touching and very sobering it is you know coming from a really western world you don't really have any concept of this and it is just something so far out there to the modern populace that just to watch it and to see the pain in some of these people's eyes when they start to talk they talk about the things they did uh, another one of them was like a city elder or a community elder and he talks about how he allowed these things to go on and he felt bad for them and you have his wife who is still fearing from the government, kind of scolds Wang and tells her, you know, stop asking my husband those questions. Uh, tr quit trying to get him to say stuff. He doesn't need to talk about it. We don't need any problems. Because it showed the fear that they lived under. And in it, she highlighted some of the various advertisements that the Chinese government used, along with textbooks, commercials. And a lot of the commercials were really cutesy and had like little kids smiling and laughing. But the words are saying is, only have one child, only have one child. If you have more than one, it's against the law and we're all going to die because there's not enough food for all of us. And that really strikes home because it is, it is something that she lived through but didn't really understand. And then she, becoming a mother, is able to look at it in a different perspective to see the indoctrination, the propaganda that was forced on them. And her mother is one of those people that kind of agrees with the one child policy in a little ways and then a little bit and you know kind of through their conversations she kind of scolds Wang a little bit and it's like you know it was good it helped us do what we need to have to but from Wang's perspective what if she was the second born child what would have happened to her you know her mother believed in this and then there was another sister that talks about it as well and how she had a kid that she had to give up because it was a daughter and she knew if she didn't then it would have to be registered to the government and the government would cause forced sterilizations what they did which they did to hundreds of thousands of women after they had either their first child or if they were called having a second child they would force sterilize them possibly take the child it also touches on a little bit of about the adoption that was going on and how the Chinese government <clears throat> was kind of working hand in fist with these various adoption agencies to the point where you would have people just picking up these kids, going to, taking them to the adoption agency. They get a little bit of money, not much money at all. And then the child is in, in essence, sold off to some Western family somewhere that is willing to pay for it. And the vast majority of these children are little girls. And it is just horrendous. That one, that this is going on in today's time, or even the fact that it went on in the 80s and 90s up into the early 2000s and it is absolutely absurd but like I said I, I cannot highly recommend this documentary enough it is phenomenal it is a little bit of a tearjerker in some instances it is also in English and Mandarin Chinese so there are subtitles you have to read and I think the subtitles kind of helps in a way because you having to read it it takes away a little bit of hearing them speak and actually comprehending the words. I can imagine if I actually spoke Mandarin, how it would affect me, and it probably would affect me more because I would be hearing the pain in their voice instead of reading the pain in their voice in terms of what they're saying, coupling that with the expressions, the eyes, how they sag or drop when they talk about this, the little tears that you see come in their eyes. And it is, it is, it's an atrocity. It should never have happened. It did, and we had to try to. We have to try to build upon it, and show it to the world what was going on. Like I said, can't recommend this enough. If you got some time, go over to Amazon Prime, give it a watch. It's on there streaming, and it's probably my favorite documentary of 2019. And hopefully, it, it'll win an Oscar this year. I, I really would like that. Thank you.